Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 78 in my second series for Anno 1800. Now, in the last episode, I spent some time looking over the DLC for Vibrant Cities and Seasonal Decorations, while also building out this new, colourful, artisan village here in Swords. Today, I plan on mostly working on logistics, seeing, you know, which chains we can optimise and maybe even get rid of altogether, as I'm trying to stabilise a wildly fluctuating economy. So I've got a list of stuff that I kind of want to get done, but there's only so much I could kind of prepare for in the future or plan ahead. So I'm sure we're going to run into things that will be stuff I didn't predict and we're going to have to figure it out on the fly. But at least I have a bit of a mission statement for this episode and a few different things I want to get done. One of the first things is actually just to beef up the amount of trade routes and just consolidate them down a bit because we currently have, let's just say, 50 trade routes that a lot of them are very messy. And every now and then I do these kind of trade route overhauls just to make things flow a little bit easier. If we add a few more ships, which I'll just do now, I'll just queue up 10. Uh, just get rid of this too. There we go, 10 new cargo ships, 30 influence in total. Uh, with those, we can now have more routes dedicated to just one good that are making less stops and just being a little less, less busy and awkward to manage. So hopefully that'll just help things out. Another thing I wanna do then is back over on Swords in our research institute. I was thinking of maybe building a trade union or uh, sorry, a town hall for the, next to the hotels. Have it kind of um, as a placeholder there. So I just want to move this guy up to the front and this guy up to the front because they're going to be needed. We'll have a look at them later when we actually get them and we can beef this up all the way. So in four minutes, we get our extra coffee plant, uh, production for the old world back in Cape Trelawney and Crown Farms. And then we're going to go straight into Mr. Bertram, hotel manager. Uh, and this one is for the hotel as well, the concierge. So both of them, I'm hoping that maybe... We could pop them in here. This has coverage of all the hotels, at least on this side of the island, obviously. And uh, we could get some benefits from it. I haven't really tried to boost the hotels at all, so it's more just for variety's sake and for fun. It might end up getting rid of it if it's not useful or something. And it does bother me that it's not evenly placed, but there's just nothing I could do about that. I did think about how could I make that work, but it's either something would have to be off, you know, in terms of shape. Uh, and size, but I could probably um, make it look a little nicer when we put some decorations and things around it to make it look like it's just actually bigger than it is, and that might we might be able to get away with it then. So um, when I said wildly fluctuating economy here at the start of the episode, there's just a bunch of random goods that seem to be falling through the cracks in terms of either we are producing enough and they're not being traded correctly, or we're not producing enough just bottom uh, straight up. Grapes is one of them, so. I guess we'll tackle that first. Let's try to go through these one by one. So grapes is largely made on this island here, the I island of Scaries. Could simply go to press. Yeah, this is fine. A little bit of happiness, a little bit of negative happiness, and then happiness and light. <laughs> it's important to be true to oneself. So this is largely where the vineyards are hosted on Scaries. We do have a worker de uh, deficiency. Is it on this island alone? You yeah, choice. bread is a problem, so we'll, we'll sort out bread as well, but we might as well do this first. So one of the first things I noticed is um, we have nine of the tractor barns giving us the extra output. So if we want to just look statistically before we actually adjust this, we're making 19 grapes on the island. And if we have a look at the entire old world, we're making 21 in total. There's a little bit produced on swords, uh, mostly for aesthetics, but I think they are actually picked up. We'll have to check that, but anyway... We can easily get another tractor barn. I think um, you can hold 10 from any given uh, fuel station, right? Where is the fuel station, anyway? Let's just brighten up the day. It's getting a little dark. I don't know why I can't... Oh, right, it's right there. <laughs> Couldn't see it. Um, so, yeah, so the fuel station, I think, can support up to 10 tractor barns. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ah, only 8. Oh, no, 9. There we go. Yeah, so we'll just add in another one, then. Um... Let's add it to this. Okay. And then we'll have to expand that out. Now, something that I noticed was this has too many modules. 213. Let's just cut this part of the farm. Went down to 161. Okay. And then this one can go up to 192. 183. And maybe we'll just do this. I could just look a little nicer. Oh, I could put that signpost back in, I guess. 
Is it a agricultural ornament? It is. There it is. And maybe, um, hmm. Just some trees and things along here to kind of like, you know, block the farm a little bit from the view of people on the roads. Uh, what else could we do? We could do the other regular kind of tree, the mature tree. Doesn't have to be even. Just has to look natural. All right, cool. So just something like that. I don't know. That's fine. Um, and that should increase the output significantly, right, of the island. It's like having three farms down instead of just one. So that should be what we need. I might just, I think I might as well just add in another one down here. And just have it regular and see if we could do the same kind of thing. Does that look weird? Kind of does. Don't know why though, but I guess it just kind of... No, I suppose it's fine. Alright, um, we'll just do something similar with these trees here. Just flip them to make them a bit different. Something like that. A little bit of grass. And there you go. So our sort of vineyard industry is vastly grown. Um, or it's grown very quickly, but to take over a lot of the island. It meant to be just this quaint little area up here, and now it's, like, huge. But that's kind of cool, you know. Uh, someone actually mentioned in the comments of the previous episode, and thank you so much, by the way, for such kind words. I know it's been... I've been, like, really erratic with how I've uploaded and stuff, but at least I'm back now. I'm going to try to increase the amount of uploads. It might just take a little while. Um, but as I kind of sort out other affairs, get my schedule aligned again, I'd like to obviously produce uh, as much as I can, so definitely more than just one episode a week. Um... But the comment was something along the lines of, you know, working over here on swords. There used to be the old potato village here. There used to be, like, the grain village and things like that from, like, really, really, really long ago. Hundreds of hours ago in this game. And it is quite cool, like, as time goes on to see different areas develop and change and, like, grow to be, like, really large and stuff. So it was just, like, a nice comment when they were like, oh, I remember the days when there was a, you know, grain village was there. And now we're building up these massive towering skyscrapers looking over everything or this used to be you know just like a workers or little workers island uh, essentially and now there are no workers on this island at all so it's just little things like that it's kind of nice to see the progression and then you look back at something like scary's this place and it's like yeah we started off with just a few little vineyards then we added tractors now we've added a whole industry the the organic growth feels quite natural um I guess if you're really good at the game and you just planned it all from the start you never get that sort of progression but it's i don't know it's made for fun fun series i think doing it this way uh, okay so that's the tractors now we've already got roots carrying grapes to and from where they need to go so that should fix mostly most things there so I'm just gonna add a little tick mark next to the thing about tractors and vineyards the next one was to do with bread um, and something I thought was be quite cool when we looked at the seasonal decorations pack we've run out of yeah so they're actually low on flour here hmm there's a few things I could do about that, but I don't want to change that just yet. Because I think I might end up pulling pull in bread through Docklands, but we'll see. But something I noticed was we have this lovely area at the back of the school. And it meant to be sort of an apple cider kind of orchard, I guess. And then like a play area where, you, you know, a petting zoo almost for the sheep and the farm animals out the back for the kids to come through. Um, I just thought it'd be cool just to add down one of those things just for now. Maybe the cider stall. <laughs> it's not exactly kid friendly, but I could I could picture it being here uh, for some sort of seasonal event or whatever. And then we can have a look at it in a second. What else can we do? A pumpkin cart, maybe. Um, pumpkin competition. I guess that would kind of make more sense for the kids. The bonfire is huge. Pumpkin barrels. I'll just add some pumpkin barrels right there. And then we'll just change the color of the grass back. There we go. I don't know. There's something just really nice about that. Maybe we could have our archway leading in. Yeah, that would make sense too, right? So there's only one archway that actually has grass on the bottom. And it's the autumnal archway gate. Which makes sense for us anyway, because it's the... Uh, it matches what we're using inside there. Wouldn't make sense for, for winter, you know? All right, so there we go. That's our little, our little mini festival that's going on right now inside the children's play area. There's just a cider stall for the adults, <laughs> and they can still go play with the the sheep or whatever. So that's fine. A little takeover. Um, okay, 
so next thing is to make the dedicated old world bread route because bread is a problem and it fluctuates wildly. Um, so yeah, so I can barely remember what I was thinking when I was first coming up with doing this, but if we have a look at bread, we have a cape to the old world route that delivers bread in here. And then we have the old world route. This is one of the ones that made me realize like, yeah, we just need, you know, some new ships to do this kind of thing because it's too messy. So let's just take off the bread off of this thing. Say okay. Um, I'll leave this one for now uh, and just see what we're going to do with that in a moment. Trade route. So we'll start a new trade route. We've just got a new ship made. Perfect timing, actually. So is it here? There it is, the Invincible. And we want to go there, 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 there. Something like that. Now, bread is going to come into the Swords Docklands. And then we can just start delivering it everywhere. So it's a bread delivery route. So we'll load bread up at Swords. Boom. And it's just one ship doing this one thing. If in future we run out of ships and things, you know, we can obviously add more to this uh, route. And what I might do as well is bread, I think, is also produced in Malahide, although it's never going to fill up. But just in case, we'll also tell it to pick up whatever it can there. But we'll set a really high limit, so that way we're not taking too much away. Uh, we don't need to actually go to Lusk. That doesn't need to happen. Yeah, sweet. All right, cool. So this is just going to be uh, bread delivery. I think, and then we'll just assign it to Old World and accept. So if we go into our Old World category, we have collections. Maybe I'll, I'll click, I'll say deliveries dash bread. Often I call these types of routes specialty, but because we're staying in one region, I'm going to call it delivery. But when it's specialty, um, it goes into multi-regional. So specialty, coal, coffee, construction, gas, rum, sugar, these things go all over the place. But yeah, this this one, I think I'm just going to keep it um, old world. However, actually thinking about it, if we do look globally and we go all islands, consumer goods, bread. I'm assuming that bread is being produced. Yeah, so eight tons of bread is produced on Crown Farm. So it's a little spillover. Hmm. It's, I'm just wondering, is it even worth picking it up? Probably not. The extra time it takes to go all the way out there just to get that and then come back. I know it all sort of kind of works itself out eventually, but... When you've only got one ship on the route, you can have some slowdown. Speaking of, we're finally seeing the bottom fall out. Um, let's just reduce the amount of engineers working in here significantly. It's going to probably keep falling down. Let's see what these engineers are missing. Sewing machines. Sewing machines, uh, I think coffee is largely okay. Fur coats should be fine. But yeah, there was another thing I thought they were going to be missing. Ooh, they're actually kind of missing rum, weirdly enough as well. Lots of problems, <laughs> and that's not even it. I want to expand out more engineers here. I might as well do it now, right? To see if then we can cope with the demand later. Can I even upgrade these guys? No, not now. So They're missing soap and sewing machines. Oh, well. Well, the plan is to eventually have uh, these blocks full again, and then to maybe make this area look a little nicer for the shopping district, we could have the metro tunnel type thing here for the pedestrian walk pack. Just something like that, again, quote-unquote for now. Yes, but well, the, the idea is that this is a bit of a shopping district. And then there'll be the, uh, you know, the extra houses and stuff around that. This is almost like the banking district, really. All right, cool. Um, what about you guys? At least the investors, excuse me, are fine. Okay, so that's the dedicated bread route. Let's just check on bread inside the Docklands itself and see how we're getting on. So I'm going to remove the champagne for bread exchange here. We might use that for something else in future. But right now, that should be more than enough bread coming in. 600 in exchange for 53 gramophones. It's so funny. It's such a weird economy I've got going on. I, don't, I can't imagine anyone has this problem. Maybe they do. But I have everything for the high tier goods. But I'm losing out on the basic stuff. It's such a weird situation. Surely if you can't produce basic stuff, you can't get to the high tier. So I'm not really sure how I've managed that. But that's what keeps happening. Um, so I just wanted to add this up really quickly. I just have my phone out in the calculator. So bread is... If we Actually, we'll just include just the old world, I guess. 17 tons per minute. So that's 17 times Captain Tobias arrives every 20 minutes. It's about every 22 minutes, really, so let's... I'll just say 25. Overproduce is always better than under, obviously. So that says we should be bringing in 425 bread 
into the Darklands. So I'll just cap it at, I'll just put it to 500 again. Big overestimation, but you know, it should work itself out and fill up eventually then, if that's the case. And I'll leave some gramophones spare for us to use later. Great. All right, good. So that should sort out that problem. We should see bread making its way around um, in not too long. And while we have that bread route, let's give it a nice name for the ship. That's not the right thing at all. It's called the Invincible. I'm going to give it an Irish name. Brennan's. Today's bread today. Today's bread today. Um, all right. Those who know, know. Um, so, yeah, this keeps happening over here as well. When we run out of something for the artisans, what ends up happening is they fall below the threshold of needing a university. So we have to upgrade them so they can get a university access and then downgrade them again <laughs> when they do. Because I'm trying to keep it very finely balanced um, and I'm failing. So let's just give a couple extra upgrades as well to these workers. And then I'll just speed up time really quickly. So once this number now goes over... 1500 which it just did they're going to start utilizing the university and then we can downgrade these houses back again i know it's a bit weird to do it like this but it's just to keep our population growing so what are we on now 1541 so we can get rid of two more i'll just speed it up speed of time again so as they're growing and filling up as long as it stays above 1500 they won't fall below it ever again until they run out of something and then it locks out something so that's the problem <laughs> um the goal of obviously is to kind of get our economy to a position where i can just walk away for hours and nothing goes wrong oh, i just messed it up sorry there we go we'll just keep it like that for a while and then i'll come back to it and remove those later all right cool I feel like time is going by faster than it should. Um, all right, so let me just go through my little list, see what we've done. So that's the bread route, a little bit of cider in Malahide. Change the dr jam route to have citrus. Ah, yes, I remember now. So our jam route, there's a specialty route, a, a collection route in the old world for jam. And yeah, I'd kind of like to do this separately actually. But what the, the issue is basically that citrus is falling short, I think. And we produce citrus on rush. Hmm. I can't quite remember why I wrote this down in my notes, because I don't really see the issue. Also, we're very short on artisans. Again, that's because of the sewing machines. That's stuff I didn't plan for at all, so I'll have to look into that. Oh, yeah, and soap, of course. All right, oh, yeah. <laughs> so soap was really the foundation thing that I want to do. So we got rid of... Tallow still needs to come in, but what doesn't really need to come in anymore is something like grain. We could maybe just deliver that. So I'm going to switch out grain to bring in soap instead. And then we can look at what kind of soap, how much soap we need here. So 14 tons per minute is what's needed, although it says we're producing 10. I can't believe that. Oh yeah, sorry. I thought I got rid of this area. I thought I talked about that. I guess not. So yeah, so something I wanted to do when I was making those ships is we can get rid of... When I was talking at the beginning of the episode about getting a large por getting rid of potentially a portion of industry, I was thinking of just getting rid of not all pigs, but kind of the a large part of the industry that's in there for getting soap. So we currently make soap in these two buildings, these two soap factories. We still need tallow um, for a bunch of different things, but we don't need soap anymore. Or we don't need the actual industry supporting it. We can just pull that in through Docklands. That's the hopes anyway. So this trade union with its 40% productivity to animal farms, then 20% and then negative 40% to workforce. We should get rid of it. Get rid of it all and say, see you later. Now that's gonna save some grain because those silos are gone as well. What I was thinking of doing is extending the wool because wool, if you remember in the previous episode, we added a bunch more fur coats and we're using the fur dealer or the fashion designer, whatever her name is, the item that then lets us use Oh my god. I didn't see the um, decorations. That lets us use wool instead of cotton fabric, right? So it cuts out a bit of a chain for us. Uh, I'm going to be extremely lazy with this and just delete this and rebuild it. <laughs> Hopefully we have the materials to do so. Okay. I know there's a gap. Just deal with it, okay? <laughs> um... All right, so 
They got wool, they have their silos, everything. It's just like replacing what was there and changing into something else. But that means, at least here in Docklands, we can now say, yeah, I want to pull in soap. So, soap. Now we're producing six locally. We need 14. So 14 times 20-ish, 25 maybe. What's that going to be? That's going to be 14 times 24. Uh, 336 times 24. 336. So let's just round it up to 350. I, I'm, sure, I'm confident we'll have more than enough steel to do that. And um, then we should be producing more than enough wool to support all of these fur coat industries. The fur coats are basically full. They're loving life. And I think all of that's working out fine. I haven't seen it be a shortfall yet. So I'm, I'm guessing that's working just fine. Okay, so a bit messy in how I explained that. But essentially what just happened is I removed a bunch of pig farms, replaced them with cotton wool farms to support the fur industry and in exchange for the in, in, you know in replacement for getting rid of the pigs and the uh, soap we're just going to pull it in through Docklands now grain was coming in through Docklands here to support the silos but what I think I'm going to do instead is just ship grain down from um, swords because it's made there anyway so on one of the return journeys it doesn't really matter which one any of the return journeys for some of these things one two three four five they've actually got room for another thing to go up so maybe i'll just make this a return journey thing and just say hey you guys pick up grain and you unload it down here and that should be more than enough to sustain the silos i think because the demand's not that high um so Grain is already here. It's in exchange for champagne. So we'll just bump that up to like 150 or something and hopefully that works. And <laughs> we'll see how this all shakes out. So that's the plan. So we've kind of cut out a part of an industry, not fully. The reason we have pigs at all is because we still need it for uh, sausages and they're made in the slaughterhouses here. So that should be working. Um, how's our second ship? Did we ever get our second one? There's eight to go. We must have got our second one somewhere. I'm not sure where they go by default. Idle ships. Uh, they go around to this little uh, bay. That's actually kind of cool. <laughs> Let's let them keep doing that. All right, cool. So 170 artisans. Now we can have a look at um, what else a pro there's a problem with. So like I said, citrus seemed to be a problem. Maybe it was in here, is it? No, soap is a problem there. Maybe one of the restaurants had an issue before, and that's why I had that written down. I'm not too sure. But I wrote down citrus is having an issue. So Everything is a nice, swift ride away. So I don't know. Any to Interesting, actually. They don't have full reach to a restaurant or to a variety theater. Yet there's a variety theater right there, but they don't have a bus stop, I guess, is the issue. Never really realized that before. They also have no access to a bar. Uh, probably because the nearest bar is out of whatever it needs, right? Yeah. Okay, anyways. So that's getting better. We've sorted out a few things. Um, the other thing was... I mean, that's it. That's pretty much everything I wrote down. Other than fur coats and seeing if we get these trade unions for the hotels up and running. Or sorry, town hall. I always say trade union instead. Um, so we're about to get Mr. Bertram in one minute. And then we're going to get the other one after that. And she's just, uh, or he is just a much shorter time needed. Uh, the engineers have kind of come back up as well, although they're falling again. So yeah, I guess we're going to have to look into what the situation is then with sewing machines. So this would be kind of an interesting one to track. Because it's been a very long time since I've had to look at something like this. So let's just quickly go all islands, sewing machines. So we're just below what it, what it needs to be. And the production's actually falling right in front of my very eyes. I've never really seen that before. Wow, we, yeah, it's just... What is going on? I've never seen that before. It's just slowly falling down. I'm trying to think, what, what would do that in real time? Dealing with you could be a lot of that is really weird. I'm trying to think, could it be something to do with the demand buildings, right? Yeah, that could be it. Something like that. Because we ran out of soap, which means that you're running out of sewing machines because the demand, the reduced consumption being 10% obviously makes a big difference to an area of this size. So what about anyone else reduce sewing machines? I'm guessing not. They don't normally double up too much. Doesn't seem like it. 
Um, what about over here? Browsing is the finest part. The way our wares present themselves is everything. <laughs> it's so cool. Isn't this game just great? <laughs> I love the cause and effect of things. I don't know what it is about games that do that, but when you've got a cause and effect, like something happens and there's multiple layers of chains where things go wrong. I love that. Um, so yeah, so just while we're here, while we have that guy, let's just make this town hall. And let's throw Mr. Bertram in. So chance of fire, chance of illness, and bonus residence. So negative 10, negative 10, bonus residence 20. When you've got... Uh, tourist mooring, bread, variety theater, restaurant jam, cafe, shampoo, and a bar. You get extra out of them. So we'll see how much it goes up to. Oh my god, 660? Holy sh crap, that's a lot. 160 more. But it says bonus residence 20. Is it 20 for every 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16? It is. It's 20 residents for every category of thing? I never knew that. Holy crap. So bonus residence 160 if you fulfill all of those things, right? Tourist, bread, variety theater, restaurant, jam, cafe, shampoo, and bar. Wow. Yeah, that's like... So how much is that? 160 times 5? Someone out there, quickly see if you can beat me to it. 160 times 5? 800. Wow. That's 800 extra. It's like having a whole other hotel. That's crazy. Um, yeah, we can see what else we can add in. Actually, we can add that lovely lady in right there. I recognize her. Affects hotels. Happiness, 10. Reduce needs, 20. For jam, jam, bread, and lemonade. Get in there. And then the final guy we're getting is the concierge, who is going to give us what? I am one of the scholars. Can happiness, 15. Chance of fire and illness. Now, that happiness, I did a test before, but I don't know if it's fully accurate. That, Do you know if you get the unhappiness from the newspaper and it caps everything to like 80% in terms of consumption. I don't think the happiness items, no matter how much happiness they add, change that. I think you're always gonna get capped if you get a bad newspaper. Even if the happiness is ecstatic, you know? Which kind of sucks, but I kind of get it. It's like, well, it's tourists, right? If they're reading the news, <laughs> they're not gonna go there, I guess, if it's bad. I don't know. I guess that's the logic. Um, so I, 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 basically what I'm saying is I don't know what happiness really matters then. Because can you even have writing in your uh, in your thing? What's up with this, by the way? Ship constructed. The route to the Docklands is only 80% for them. What about here? 80% as well? It's madness. Is it because they need another bus stop, maybe? Would linking the bus stops more of a chain? Would that help, I wonder? Let's just test that theory out. It's not going to look good there, but I'll just throw it in to see. Does it change the, the supply? Making this hotspot more attractive may help better fulfill its people's needs. Oh, right. Ah, oh. the attractiveness out of this is only 240 because it's not connected. Oh God, that sucks. I don't like that at all. Is that a new thing? I guess happiness is just money, but still. Oh my God. So just in case it's not clear, because I've designed the Docklands to look nice rather than to be efficient, it's separated, right? It doesn't connect from here to here. It doesn't connect from here to here. So all of these that add little bits of attraction, they don't add any attraction because it's not connected to the main building. That sucks, man. Why can't they just, like, let it reach across roads at the very least? I don't know. Like, why punish it? <laughs> You're actively saying that you want it to, like, all connect and look hideous. Basically. You ain't, get a, you ain't getting a better looking Docklands than this. And yet it's, like, less attractive for it, you know? That kills me. Goddamn kills me. Oh, well. Make a petition. Somebody make a petition <laughs> to Ubisoft Minds and say, come on. This, What's the reason for that, you know? Obviously, they're done touching Docklands, I guess, at this point. But come on. It's like, come on. I just recently played uh, South Park The Stick of Truth. Great game, speaking of Ubisoft. Anyway, um... 
Right, oh well, to get back on focus. That's interesting with the hotels, though. Either way, it's like, hey, we're still getting more. It just annoys me when I see things like that, where it's like, ah, oh, we're not fully getting something that we could be. But not that it matters. Money's capped anyway. <laughs> so it's like, what does it matter, really? All right, so all of that looks good. Jam is totally going to be totally fine. And bread. I do wonder about that citrus problem I had before, but I'll leave it for now. Something else I did notice, actually, was back on the factory island of Lusk, was that... Yeah, we, hook, we have got something free as an item slock, socket for chemical plants. So I don't know if there's anything else we can get there. Chemical plant, lemonade. Chemical plant shampoo. Nope, I guess there's nothing else for us. It doesn't seem right though. It seems like you should be able, you should, surely all production buildings chance of fire. Like, does that even affect it? I don't think so. To say all production buildings, though. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have that item covering it, so I don't think it makes a difference. Anyway, I just noticed that we have a free slot. These are all chemical plants, and I was like, oh, if we had another item for chemical plants, that might be nice. Maybe in the next season of DLC, they might add something. I don't know. But these things take in. Oh, they actually take in resin. Sorry, I thought it was citrus. There we go, citrus for the lemonade. Everything seems fine though. There's 400 in reserve. I think it's fine. Okay. Um. I'm just trying to think a focus up now and think what could we now potentially do and sort out because things could be better. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm so I'm such an idiot. Coffee can be improved yet again, right? Over in Cape Trelawney because we just unlocked that next building and we have it in reserve. So boom. So there's the extra malt and coffee. We built more malt than we needed last episode, I think. So that should be okay, but we could check it. Intermediate malt, 58 to 59. Little short. <laughs> just keep stacking them in and just off sort this area out eventually. But right, so that should be coffee totally fine now. Consumer goods, coffee. 68 to 58, 58 slash 59, depending on if our department stores are up and running, right? How good is that? And we just then have ships that are specialty for coffee. So, um, multi-regional coffee, boom. Three ships. The Nespresso, the Dewey Egberts, and this one's called Crown Mines. Can we change that, please? Um, Kenko, obviously. All right, the coffee's coming in. Love it. Now, what are we missing? Still missing that soap. So the trickle-down effect of my soap plan has not come to fruition just yet. Have we pulled it in through the Docklands? 350. The trade has just recently happened. So let's check the soap route. Oh, you know what? I don't think there is one. That could be why. Uh, well, actually, no, there is. There is. It's going to sword, uh, rush first, though, and then dropping to swords. So the 643 in rush, I see. Okay, well, just to keep... Yeah, well, I just have to wait for it to overproduce then, don't I? There's nothing really I can do about that. We just have to wait. I think if I pulled some from here, if you want to just keep the economy moving, could do that. Just deliver it over, but it'll still have a bit of an issue, I think. Take some of that bread while you're at it. Okay, so that should fix soap. And that's going to then give us back the sewing machines problem. What the hell is going on there? That's crazy. I've never seen that before. I guess it's freaking out because it's not enough artisans as well. I'm just going to click that again. Nope, it's still bugged. All right, so sewing machines is going to be reduced by 10% and pocket watches. So once this just gets delivered... Whoops. That guy will calm down, hopefully, in a moment once it gets delivered properly. Once the sewing mach thing, machines thing reduces, then it should be all right. But we're probably going to have that issue to deal with, right, at some point, even with the 10% change. So let's go all islands, sewing machines. 39 to 35 demand now. So it's we are producing more than the demand now. That's so weird the way it's so, ran not random, but volatile, I guess. It just, well, that means I don't really need to build any more factories is what I'm getting at. I just need to stabilize the other things that are depending on it, right? So I guess that's what I'll focus on. Um, but it would be really great if I could build those extra artisan houses or those extra um, engineers and just complete this area a bit. 
Um, alright, so let's have a look. How much time do we have left on the thing? Five minutes to go. Okay. Uh, well, while we're waiting, I was thinking I could make this place look a little nicer. Grapes have just arrived. One grape. Actually, before I do that, let's check on the grapes, because that was one of the first problems that I wanted to fix. So the Faustino <laughs> goes to Scaries, drops everything at Lusk, and then Lusk takes it up to different things. It's trying to pick some up at Swords, and then drop them at Lusk. Okay. There's a few problems with that. Let's just see... Is it capped? It is capped, actually. Hmm. Is it capped on Lusk? No. Should be. Should be capped just a little bit. Alright, let me look at that route again. We're never dropping it to swords. That's the problem, right? We're just... Swords is trying to rely on itself. Yeah, okay. That should fix it. That's a weird thing to do, though. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Let's just get rid of that. And that. Okay. That seems to make more sense to me. So we're picking it up at Scaries, which is where it's made. The majority is dropped. In fact, actually, I think I'll rotate that around, yeah. The majority is dropped to Swords, but then it'll pick it back up until that cap. And then it'll drop the remaining at Lusk to make Champagne. That works, right? That works. So the only way this works properly, though, is just making sure the cap at Swords is enough for the demand at Swords. So Swords is cap. Demand is 5. I guess I don't know the length of the route, but we could say... So it's 5 tons per minute. Well, wouldn't that be amazing if it told you the average time of a route? How good would that be? I'm, I don't know why I've never thought of that, but if it just said it in here in the trade route, and it says, like, after they make one full run, it just tells you the time of it. Oh my god, how good would that be? I mean, I guess you don't need it that badly, but it would be nice for a situation like this where I'm like, okay... How often does a ship really need to come by here to deliver this thing? And how much can they take back? And how, what kind of reserve do I need to set? If I knew the exact timing, I could set it like really well. Not that, like I said, enough time passes, it all kind of works out anyway, so it is fine, but I'll just set it to 100. So that's, is that like 20 minutes or something? Yeah, it's about 20 minutes because it consumes five per minute. So as long as the route comes here within 20 minutes, that's fine. Um, alright. And then this is reducing beer, coffee, and champagne. Good. Clog. Alright, we're back up to the max amount. Feeling good. What's needed in here? Grapes again. Venison tartare. Coffee, champagne, and beer. I'll tell you what, some of these oh, must try the house in there. What are we making here? Or oh, making glog as well. Yeah, that's good. Beer doesn't have any effect here, but coffee and champagne being reduced by 10% is significant. I'm thinking that maybe I'll make some room for another restaurant somewhere. Because now we've got this excess uh, tourist workforce. We could definitely apply it to more, but we can always just go like this and say, hey, raise that population. So if we have a, a bit of a zoom out, zoom out all the way. It, where was it? It was about here, right? So yeah, we're just covering that a little bit more. A few of those extra houses, but not much more than that, really. This We're kind of running out of houses. Some of these can maybe get hit by it. We don't affect the scholars. And we're just touching on some of the edges of um, the artisans out there. This is why eventually like, I'd like to have all this be more investors and stuff. So we could affect a lot. Um, but yeah, we should watch that population just kind of... I was going to say go up. It's just falling right now. What's happening as well? It's the engineers again. Sewing machines again. Yeah, so let me, I guess, look at this sewing machine route. The sewing machines are picked up in Lusk and distributed around the various islands.
They go to rush first. Hmm. And then they go to swords. I guess that's fine. I mean, sure. They pick everything back up that they can, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's just a bit low. 542. But we're obviously making enough. It did say we were making enough. That's what has me a little bit confused. So is it just an old world problem, maybe? No, old world is totally fine. But when you add in crown farms, it gets a little bit worse. Just a little bit. So yeah, I don't know. I think it's just the demand fluctuations that we were seeing. And now it'll work itself out. I, I hope so, anyway. We've now got three ships just waiting to be used as well. So that's cool. We're just making all those extra ships. We've got lots of room for other things. So we got that other item. Uh, so, concierge. Alright, 15 extra happiness. These are up to... From all the sights and beauty. So, I wonder, can I just speed some things up here? Because I'm noticing, like, yeah, there's just this, like, lag, this delay in certain goods, like the grapes and things. So, I might just try and pick some up ourselves. Okay, anyways. So, let me think, uh, what could we focus on then next? So, if... Yeah, I want to get to the root of the sewing machine thing. Like, it seems to be fine. That's what has me just a little bit confused. So what's the situation with New World to Old World? So obviously, see, sewing machines are crazy because they go to the New World as well as the Old World and to Cape Trelawney. So we're sending them all over the place. They're involved on so many different routes. So the Cape to the Old World. So at Lusk, we're actually dropping off fur coats there. Lusk is brimming with fur coats. So there's some issues, you know. So let's make, should we make a specialty just for sewing machines? Because it is brought to so many different places. It Kind of begs the question, why aren't we doing that? And we're, excuse me, giving crown farms. Holy shit, we're just throwing them overboard? Oh my god, that's the problem. <laughs> so basically, we're going to... The ship is on its way here, and when it tries to drop off sewing machines, if it can't drop off anymore, it just throws them overboard because I was too lazy to make a second route, or I didn't have what we needed. This place is probably brimming with them as well, and it's missing fur coats. Yeah, there's a whole issue, isn't there? Okay, well, that's good. At least we identified the problem. So let me see, how, many, how much is on the island then? Only 248, so that's not the proper solution, but it's obviously wrong to be throwing them, potentially throwing them overboard. Oh man, what a nightmare. And then we're doing similar things out here and then bringing them to Port of Venus. And then in the New World, we're taking them from Port of Venus, I assume, and bringing them to Marbella. And this is Marbella. But Marbella is empty, doesn't have any. Despite this island having 50, uh, 800 right now, where's this ship? Still doesn't have any? What's going on? This ship isn't working. It's got six loads of tortillas on it. What the hell, man? How did that happen? Okay, so there's a problem solved. And now sewing machines will work its way around here a bit better. So that's good. <laughs> the problem is just never end. So the resource cannot be unloaded as the storage is full. Well, that's fine. Don't worry about that. As long as you're not taking on more than the slots that you're supposed to, you're okay. Um, and just for people who don't remember or don't know, sewing machines are just all made down here. This is the sewing machine area. The finishing touches and, and it's fine, you know. So just slam out some more, please. And apparently... So if I just have a look then... Sorry to be so buried in the screen today, but 33 is made here. Now 35. So we're obviously getting a few extras elsewhere. But where? Not there. We're apparently able to produce two sewing machines in Malahide. Malahide's a small island down here. I don't know how that's possible, though. Oh, it's just full. Hmm. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do then is, because I know that there's one island that does it, I think we'll make a specialty route just for sewing machines. It seems to just make sense, but it's, it's a big mess because it's going to affect so many other routes. But we can at least just start it off by saying like, yeah, here's Lusk, right? That's where we make it. Let's start distributing around to the old world first. 
Guess I have to think about how many islands even take them. That one doesn't. I wish it would tell me here, actually. It'd be nice. Anyway. Sewing machine. So yeah, load up. Max it out. Unload its swords. Unload it rush. And then I guess you could actually pick it up at Malahide. Because they've got too many. And then unload again. So that's just the old world. So delivery. Sewing machines. Ship constructed. Okay, maybe I could just keep it to the old world, actually, as just doing this. Oh, did I put the wrong ship on it? Whoops. Yeah. I hope I didn't break that other ship, did I? Uh, no, doesn't look like it. Good. Alright, so this ship is off doing its thing now. Also, this thing just isn't moving, so you can continue, I suppose. <laughs> what is going on? I feel like there's so many mistakes around here right now. Uh, the other thing, I wanted to just find that ship really quickly because we could potentially equip it with something. So just stay there for a sec. Movement speed, 20%. Eh, just take that one, that one's fine. So there's nothing here you can pick up yet. It's just full. All right. So delivering sewing machines. So what about this? You're picking up canned goods at Lusk and sewing machines, delivering it to Rush and Soy. So yeah, let's just get rid of that. It's a mess. Stop it. Oh my God, there's so many trade routes, guys. I'm dying. Oh no. Thank God I named them as well as I did, actually, because it would be so problematic. So now I didn't track what was happening there. So I'm after making a mistake. Now I don't know what that route was called. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm trying to find it. I don't remember. I'm so sorry. There it is. Okay, it's Lust of Swords number three. Got it. All I need to do is just click and either throw these overboard or dump them somewhere. In fact, yeah, just go here real quick. Got it. I'll remember to do that in future, by the way, which is click the thing. Apparently hitting control click or alt click or something will give you a notification, I think, for it when it arrives. Good. So you just drop your stuff. That's fine. And continue on doing what you're doing. We'll get back to you in the future. The sewing machines are being delivered now. How painful is that? <laughs> Alright. Deliver that and that. And then continue about your day. Alright. Nice. Oh my god. Alright. So, sewing machines again. What a problem. So in the old world, now sewing machines is just the delivery of sewing machines around the various islands. That's that. The old world, new world to old world imports. So there's a ship that goes from Lusk, picks up some sewing machines and brings it to Port of Mist. Totally fine with that. Not happy with the idea that it's been just throwing them overboard the whole time. I suppose I could tell them to wait until you unload it. But that is a dangerous game to play. And that's why we've recruited so many new ships. because. Some ships should just be doing the fish oil, and the other ships should be just doing this, so yeah. So I guess I'll just write that down really quickly so I remember this now. So I'm going to make a fish oil route. And again, I could probably change these in the future a little bit, just to, you know, make things a little bit more efficient, but fish oil between Lusk and PB. That's it. That's all that ship will be doing then. But yeah, I think it's just better to consolidate it down. Because that's why this is why these problems are happening. It's just so messy. If you're just throwing all your excess overboard because it's stuck, like it's just such a bottleneck and you're just wasting resources. Um, granted, it wasn't always happening, but. So actually, you know what? I'll just. Yeah, no, I'll get rid of the fish oil one. Okay. And these really should be. Well, I guess they're imports for the new world. Yeah, okay. New world, it is an import. And don't throw anything overboard. Just keep it like that. 
to let me go to the ship now. Unfortunately, it's stuck um, mid-session. So when it comes in, it'll just have to tell it to stop. So just stop when you come in. Any ships not doing anything? Nope, that's fine. Okay. So now we have to make a new route. Create route. Trade route. Uh, from Lusk to Port of Venus. And it's just going to be fish oil. New world to old world. No, this is an export. Is it? Surely fish oil is made in the new world, right? I can't believe I don't know <laughs> what it was. Let me just hit accept for now. Let's see. 1800. What is it even used for? It's not used on this island at all. I'm guessing it's then distributed somewhere else. <laughs> it's so messy. Everything's so messy. Fish oil import. Oh my god, guys. All these routes like need to be deleted at this point. It's so chaotic. It doesn't seem right in my head to be saying we're sending fish oil to the new world. That can't be right. It must be the other way around, yeah? It has to be. But fish oil is empty in the new in Port of Venus. So that's why it has me confused. I think it's because we just picked it up. Let's try it that way then. What's your problem now, by the way? Ships have been paused. Yeah, that's okay. Go. Okay. So it's an export. So if we go to New World, Accu Supply. Yeah, these need to be named a bit better as well. Export fish oil and then various other exports. Yeah, I think I'm gonna in between episodes have to do another further like, you know, figure things out and then list things again. Has the ship made it yet? It still hasn't made it. God damn. I'm enjoying it though, but I feel like it might be really tedious for people, especially if you're still watching the series and there's been a break and you can't, obviously, I don't expect everyone to remember everything about this campaign. <laughs> and how is Grape still short here? God, what is going on? Am I making like just basic mistakes? Probably. No, okay, it's just about to do its first cycle. So it's about to arrive here with Grapes. Okay, good. Well, Swords should be okay, I think. I'm not seeing... I don't think we're missing anything anymore. So, in that case, here at the end of the episode, what we can do is just... Uh, make these some engineers. And then pop them over there. So that's eight. And then hopefully we can like look through everything, deal with the demand then in the next episode. So I'll need to do what we did before, which is basically just make a uh, mini temporary village just to grow some workers and stuff. And they can turn into uh, artisans. Yeah, so they'll turn into workers and then turn them into artisans and put them back over here. Uh, might as well get this all done now then. So there's only there's 12 to go. So we'll just do all 12. The gaps will be left here, so I'll know where to put them back. And I have to go over this area anyway with ornaments, so it's all good. So there's 12 more, I think. Let's just zoom out and pop them back down. Nailed it. Alright, cool. There we go. 
So now we're brimming. This district is pretty much done. Could add the little bits extra we had in here, I guess. That's what I had before. I don't know if it really looks right. I think I might leave it. I prefer it just ending, and then this could be more just like trees and stuff. Um, so yeah, I prefer it that way. We can make it like a little park or some, some sort of nice garden area that's in front of the palace, right? Palace looking good, though. If I dare say so myself. Uh, so yeah, so once those villagers grow back into workers, we can then turn them into engineers. Do they have everything they need? They should do. Given some time. Yeah. Nice. How's soap, actually? Now that that's... Okay. Also, apparently we're selling. <laughs> we're trying to sell. Good. Okay, well, I'm, I'm relatively happy then. We still made a lot of progress. Fixed a bunch of little small things, and uh, the weirdest one was, I guess, the sewing machines. Like I said, it, as going into it, I knew it was going to be a problem, like, trying to figure out what was happening with that. And that's what happens when you take a big break from a game like this, and you come back to it, is you either spot all the mistakes, or you just don't remember how things were working, you know? Um, in my case, I think it's a bit of both. This We've got a lovely ship here, machines. loaded with 300 sewing machines coming back to um, Swords right now. Maybe we'll just wait for that final delivery, and once that's done... Our work here is done <laughs> for today. I must ask you not to touch. But yeah, they have some right now anyway, which is good. But how that's going to have a knock-on effect to Cape Trelawney, I'm not too sure. But yeah, we're just short a little bit for engineers. I don't really see how though. We should have at least 10,000. How's this doing? It would be nice to get that all the way up to 5,000, just to say we did it. To say we maxed it out, because I've maxed this out. I guess that'd be kind of neat. You could do it just by, quite easily, actually, just with getting rid of a... Uh... I, can, I can actually go even... Yeah, I can go all the way up to 5,000. We still have tourists left over. I don't know why the bar is shorter than that. It looks like we did it. <laughs> We're up to 96,000. So that, that adds... By the way, for those who don't remember, that adds 10%, I think, to the population of all these buildings. I guess it doesn't add it to the hotels, though. Yeah. It's interesting. If that was there instead, those hotels would have got that benefit as well. It's a shame this isn't, like, also a sort of a trade union somehow to give us that boost. This game really does just reward you for clumping everything together, doesn't it? Um, all right, so did they get their shipment? Hi. Yes, they did. There it is. 600 or sorry 300 sewing machines delivered uh, just really quickly is there any items for ships that you want to take on board would make it go a little quicker moving speed 20 percent self-repair why not don't know if there's anything for loading and unloading that would make it quicker that we have just available here cargo slow down negative 100 percent but only when activated yeah that's fine all right off you go Alright, so there you go. Uh, I didn't really get to zoom in or spend much time building or anything, but uh, in this one. We can have some just quick shots of the city. So I feel like it's been a while. So here's our lovely restaurant district now that's been kind of, you know, there's been some problems with the global supply chain and restaurants have been not been able to stock up on time, you know? All too familiar with that <laughs> and our lovely tourism colorful village has been decimated <laughs> it'll be it'll be rebuilt and then we can add some some of those nicer ornaments back in as well actually because i'd like to for at least a portion maybe of the next episode it might not be a time lapse but just spend about 10 15 minutes getting in there and adding some ornaments in you know the kind of like to places like this sort of like how we did with the cider uh, orchard before Yeah, as the sun sets, man, this place is looking good. Nice. Still my favorite area of the game is probably just out here. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. The Palace Botanical Garden. Like, t I gotta be honest, I think it's perfect. <laughs> I just think it's so great. And then to have that, like, right in front of the palace, right next to it. Some people were saying in the comment, oh, it was one person, said, like, oh, remove the scholars out of the palace, give them their own area. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? This is awesome. I love them being inside the palace. It's so good. 
I love that. I'm never changing that. Ever. Appreciate the feedback in the comment. And I do appreciate, by the way, all the response in the previous episode. Really, really kind stuff. I should have mentioned it earlier, but it's always so nice. People have said many times that, especially during COVID, during the height of COVID, that um, these videos and things just, you know, provided a nice distraction, help people get through things, and give them some entertainment, expose them to a game maybe they didn't know about and, and all of that. And some people say it helps them sleep and everything. So, you know, it's really do take those things to heart. It's very, very kind. Because I, I have that type of content as well. You know, I'll watch different things, the kind of comfort content that you go to, especially when it was like lockdowns, just end up binging series after series of different things. Uh, for me, it was Red Letter Media. Um, I watched their best of the worst. They have a hundred episodes of it where they just watch like three bad movies and they talk about bad movies basically. But it's just very comforting. Um, so yeah, I, I can, I think, understand what people are feeling with that kind of thing. Damn, City's looking good. All right, um, that's going to be it for this episode. I'll hopefully try to, like I said, increase the speed of the schedule. And then in between this episode and the next one, I'll have a look at some of the trade route stuff and see what can be done. Um, and then I'll, I'll write it down and then do it in the next episode. Because that's always nice, I think. Me doing things off screen and then being like, well, I've got nothing to do. That's, that's not going to be good. But if I kind of figure a little bit out beforehand and then we implement my plan for an episode is usually good. That's what I did in this one. But I actually just figured... I, I did stuff way quicker than I thought, you know, after about 20 minutes, I was like, oh, okay, now what? <laughs> and then I have to figure stuff out on the fly again. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys very much again for watching. Thanks so much for all the comments. And stuff. By the way, keep, please do just for a little while, continue to like and comment on these episodes just to kind of get them back into people's feeds and things like that. That would really be much appreciated. And uh, that'll be it for today, and I'll see you... Oh, by the way, actually, just before I go, the next DLC rung of DLC announcements in Season 4, I think, is going to be this week. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, so just keep your eye on the Anno Union, I guess, if, for, if you're curious as to what's going to be happening there, or on the YouTube channel for Anno as well. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they do. Season 3, it's still good DLC. I still believe it's very good DLC, but it just wasn't as good to me as Season 1 and 2, so I'm, I'm intrigued to see where they go with piling yet more stuff on. And I think they're focusing on the new world especially. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to be doing there. Um, and yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.